According to the Indian media, more than 10 to 15,000 Chinese troops has been camped in Galvan Valley in Ladakh in India, which is inside Indian territory. The Chinese forces put up tents, dug trenches, and moved heavy equipment several kilometers inside Indian territory. The move came after India built a road several hundred kilometers long the connecting to the high altitude forward air base which is reactivated in 2008. One of the Indian experts says the situation is serious. The Chinese have come into territory which they themselves accepted as a part of India. It has completely changed the status quo. The standoff reported in at least three locations, the Galvan Valley, the Hot Springs, and the Pangong to the south. India and China are already deploying thousands of troops to the line of actual control. The world's two largest nuclear power and the world's largest armies came face to face at the main point. But this is serious. This is not a normal standoff between India and China. Already, the Nepal is accusing India of encroaching Nepal's territory as India, and according to the Chinese military, India is the one which has entered into the Chinese territory. According to some Chinese media rumors, China was increasing its troops in Ladakh is due to the India's plan on occupying Pakistan-occupied Kashmir with its military. If that happens, China would lose more than $60 billion as the BRI infrastructure goes in there. The Indian officials has no word on this, and the Chinese media is talking very little about the intrusion in the Ladakh. While the China is much superior than India in economy and the military technology, India has many superpowers as its friends. Already Trump is at giving it. Also, many think tank thinks it's a diversion tactic of China. So what do you think? Does India can hold off Chinese military if a standoff turns into a battle? China has raised the possibility of opening more military support bases abroad in the case there is a need to do so. According to a senior People's Liberation Army strategist, a media reporter on last week Thursday, Lieutenant General He Li, a former Vice President of Academy of Military Services of PLA, said at a press conference where on Wednesday last week that China would open new base under two conditions. This matter is primarily determined by whether a new base is needed to help China better fulfill missions given by the UN. Second, it depends on the approval of the nation where a new base should be located. If these two factors were fulfilled, it is possible for China to build new overseas support bases. The official said that the main function of these sites was to provide logistic support to PLA. The units abroad are not to set up Chinese military forces in other countries. China has a single military base abroad located in Djibouti on the Horn of Africa. As China is planning to increase its bases in around the world, India and US are countering Chinese in Indian Ocean and in Pacific Ocean by making a logistical cooperation on defense and for trade bases to be used as they wanted when they wanted. As of now, in Beijing, a senior Chinese military official warned the US Navy Tuesday against interference in support of Taiwan's independence, saying that Beijing would defend its claims to the islands at any cost. General Ri Juhang a member of a Central Military Commission made the remarks during a meeting in Beijing with Admiral John Richardson, a chief of U.S. naval operation. China sees Taiwan as part of its territory to be reunified, despite the two sides being ruled separately since they split in 1949 after a civil war won by Mao Zedong's communists. The self-ruled island has its own currency, flag, and government but it is not recognized as an independent state by the UN. 
Beijing has said it will not hesitate to use force if Taipei or the Taiwan formally declares independence or in case of external interventions including by the United States or other countries, the island's most powerful unofficial ally. The Taiwan issue is an internal matter for China. The concerns China's fundamental interests and the national feelings of the Chinese people, and no outside interference will be tolerated, including US and India in this matter. Most probably, US is supported by Taiwan with its military and financial status, India has its strategic ally with Taiwan. If anyone wants to separate Taiwan from China, the Chinese army will defend the unit of the motherland at any cost. In recent months, U.S. Navy ships have repeatedly passed through the Taiwan Strait, which separates mainland China from the island. Beijing views any ship passing through the Straits of essential the breach of its sovereignty. While the U.S. and many other nations view the route as an international waters too open to all. A recent U.S. law encouraging mutual visits between the U.S. and Taiwanese officials has also been anchored to Beijing. The Washington, which broke the diplomatic relationship with Taipei in 1979 to recognize Beijing, remains the island's most powerful ally, and its main arms supply is still them. So what do you think of India and U.S. are building and uh, countering China's bases and its strategics around the South China Sea? and its strategic move around the Indian Ocean and in Africa. In New Delhi, the US has broadly agreed to grant India a barrier from Iran sanctions which would allow Indian oil companies to continue to import about 1.25 million tons of oil a month till March from Tehran. A source familiar with the matter said, adding that an official announcement could come over the next few days. The US plans to reimpose the oil-related sanctions on Iran on November 4th of 2018 to choke the Islamic Republic's biggest source of income and pressure it to renegotiate a new nuclear deal. Any country or company trading with Iran without US consent after sanctions kick off risk getting out and cut off from the American financial system. The US has insisted all along that it wanted everyone to reduce oil imports from Iran to zero eventually, but was open to countries specific barriers that would allow limited imports by those pledging significant cut. India and other key importing countries have been engaged for months with the U.S. for a waiver. India and U.S. have broadly agreed on a waiver. India will cut import by a third, which is significant cut, said some sources. India had imported about 22 million tons of crude oil from Iran in 2017 to 18, and planned to raise that to be about 30 million tons in 2018 to 19. But as a condition of waiver, Indian oil firms will reduce their imports significantly, the source said. Indian companies can import 1.25 million tons a month up to March 2019, the same as they have ordered for October and November, the source said. The state oil firm are yet to decide on how this quantum will be split between them. A waiver will come as a big relief to Indian oil companies and MRPL the two largest Iranian oil consumers. How companies will pay for Iranian oil is still being negotiated between India and Iran, adding that it is likely that the two countries will stick to its existing mechanism under which 55% of the payment is made in Euro and 45% in Rupee through UCO Bank under this Rupee is used for import of rice, drugs and other products from India while the balance proceeds in rupee and euros sit idle in the Indian bank waiting for sanctions to go. 
Lean inside while building its case for Vavier, assured that the US that this payment mechanism ensure Iran can use oil money from India for any terror related activity, a key American concern said. During the negotiation, India also told the US that it would like to import more American oil if it came on a competitive terms, said Sears. India and Iran still have to figure out the shipping and the insurance details for smooth trade. Currently, Iran provides its tanker as well as the insurance for oil cargoes to India. The US sanctions have driven away Indian and the international shippers and insurers from extending their services for Iran and oil imports. So what do you think of US agrees to grant India waiver from Iranian oil sanction? Will this be a good start for India from importing oil from Iran or India is bowing to US on other imports and the exports?